Dear comrades and welcome to Kiev, Ukraine. I am here with my mom Lena. Здравствуйте и добро пожаловать в Киев. And today, guys, we will be taking you on a little tour of the city, the capital city of Ukraine, and talk about the changes that have happened from the times of the Soviet Union, going down memory lane for my mom, and uh, what Ukraine is like now. Some of you guys may have seen our prior video that we filmed where we talked about my mom's childhood in the Soviet Union and what it was like to immigrate as an adult. So if you guys haven't already seen that, I'll link it in the description. But for today's video, we are going to do a little walk around the city and find some of the few things that are left uh, from Soviet Union times and talk about the changes that have happened in Ukraine. Because just this year, Ukraine celebrated 30 years of independence. It's basically as old as I am. I can tell you how Kyiv was. 30 лет назад. Because mom, how many years did you live um, in Kiev specifically? Soviet times and non-Soviet times. 20 лет. Yeah, about да. 20 years or so. Because before my mom did live in uh, Russia in her early childhood, but basically from your early teens you were here. So I hope you guys are excited. Buckle in for a little tour of Soviet Ukraine. For those of you who don't know a lot about Ukraine or the Soviet Union, I will give you a brief introduction into that period in history. While Ukraine did have stints of independence before the Soviet Union, it had also faced occupation from other nations like Poland and Romania. It was in 1922 that Ukraine officially became a part of the Soviet Union. The USSR was comprised of 14 socialist republics that spanned Eastern Europe into Asia, and it had one federative state, which was Russia. It was in operation for 69 years under the communist ideology of Marx and Lenin, and it was a completely centralized government that put social equity above all. That meant there was next to no private ownership of property or business, everything belonged to the state, and society was indoctrinated from a young age to behave in ways that would serve society above self. So let's actually begin with where we are now. We are in the part of the city that is called Maidan Nezalezhnosti, which translates to Independence Square. This really is the main hub of the city. And even in my childhood, I remember that this square looked a lot Deep different. <laughs> there was one yeah. really big fountain that I actually used to go swimming in, is that correct? Right. <laughs> but mom, uh, how would you say like that this central part of the city has changed? Сейчас здесь много фонтанов, и они вот вечером включаются, и светомузыка, а раньше просто росли каштаны. Да? Большая, такая, такой круг каштанов был, и даже, по-моему, проходил троллейбус. Really? Вот так вот в округе, да, и выходил mm -hmm. на Крещатик. Mm -hmm. И эта площадь называлась площадь Октябрьской революции, насколько я помню. On the other side of Independence Square, if you can see right behind us, and it's interesting because there is a very famous hotel called Hotel Ukraine right behind us. But back in Soviet times, maybe not for the whole duration, but apparently it was called Hotel Moscow. Да, он назывался гостиница Москва. Очень красивое место и дорогое. Шикарное советский готель. But in more modern times, what the square is most 
well known for is that it really was the place, uh, the start of the Maidan revolution, which began in uh, 2013. Uh, Одно из них было вступление в Евросоюз, да. вот, а правительство Юнаковича не высказывало Хотели этого мнения. ближе к России быть. Да, и в этом было противодействие, противостояние. И вмешались военные, э, стрельба, и многие погибли, погибли люди и со стороны милиции со стороны простых людей. Вот, в общем, это было одно из темных и печальных страниц молодой Украины, как я считаю. Here we are in front of the House of Ukraine, which is kind of the cultural sort of center uh, here in Kiev. Сейчас это культурный центр. Вот здесь проводятся выставки, картин, галереи какие-то. But what's especially interesting, actually, about this building is that you are saying that you actually helped build it. <laughs> Back in the day, right? Back in Soviet times. Я училась в школе, и нас как рабочую силу на экскурсию, на экскурсию Нет, это было это был урок труда, называется. А что вы делали? Приходили на стройку, помогали строителям, носили мусор, укладывали там какую-то решетку, я помню, мальчишки. Издевались там кирпичи. А что вы строили в это время? Что это было? И это здание тогда называлось в 80-х годах э, дом Ленина. Да, это был, it was like a museum of, you know, Lenin and his ideology and all that kind of stuff. So obviously things have changed since then, but uh, as we talked about in uh, the first video we did, even as a child there was so much propaganda in the Soviet Union, like even in school, you, they, re, they basically like told you communism was great by like singing songs or something like that, right? In the school, yes, kindergarten, in the school, we were building concerts. Lenin, Lenin. Вот, отмечался всем Советским Союзом, выходили на парады, демонстрации, шариками, с лозунгами. And obviously, if you went against the government, there would usually be very severe consequences. Ну, конечно, конечно. Это время репрессий. Я знаю, было сразу после революции, и многие миллионы людей были отправлены в концлагеря. Или просто люди пропадали. Yeah, they disappeared. <laughs> приходили, это не смешно. Приходили домой и КГБ, машина КГБ приезжала, назывался Черный Ворон. Mm -hmm. Забирали главу семьи. Вот, и он или пропадал, или 
без вести или в тюрьму uh -huh. посажен. So walking down Krishatik being kind of the main downtown drag of the city with lots of restaurants, businesses, all that kind of stuff. Turkish restaurant. Even a Turkish restaurant. <laughs> I would say that even in my time here, there has been a huge expansion of businesses, especially Ukrainian owned businesses. And it's a really nice thing to see because back in Soviet times, it was basically illegal. To have your own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, international. And then even in the stores too, right? Like retail, you basically found the same sorts of items in every store and something like, you know, blue jeans, let's say from America, was yes. basically a black market item. So now we are just coming up to the Shatik subway station and we are going to take you guys just one stop to Arsenalna subway station, which is actually the deepest subway station in the world. Uh, they built it in 1960. It's 105 meters deep and apparently they say that you could actually take the whole Statue of Liberty and you know put the whole length in that depth and it would fit. was cool <laughs> five minute double escalator ride очень глубокое метро ну почти все метро были строены в советское время здесь в киеве да было две или три линии всего лишь сейчас конечно увеличилось количество станций город расширяется so where we will be going next is родина мать which translates to mother of the nation uh, basically it's like motherland monument in english and it was built in soviet times as well yeah, right it was built in soviet time.
we just arrived in Roitinamaitz. And mom, you were saying that you haven't been here since when? 40 years. 40 <clears throat> years? So like when you were a teenager you last teenager. came here? Jeez. Yeah. What I find interesting is that while I think most people can agree there were horrible atrocities that happened in the Soviet Union, What's interesting is that, especially with the oldest generation that lived through it, some people will say that they preferred life in the Soviet Union than now, with democracy, so to say. And I think that is because, even though there were terrible things about the Soviet Union, there was more equality going on, right? There were obviously more government services предприятия где ты работаешь выдавали квартиры людям молодым семьям и бесплатно ну да but i guess it just comes down to the fact that i think at this point in time nobody is uncorruptible when it comes to an ideology or a government group whenever you give one party so much power it is bound to end badly Ну, несмотря на все отрицательные стороны советского режима, советские люди строили государство. Они yeah. верили в будущее, в своё будущее, в будущее своих детей. Yeah. И старались yeah. для этого. Well, they were a huge power, Старая like жизнь. obviously, obviously the Soviets were, you know, yeah. made up of very hard-working people who did believe in that better future. So, of course, there were many great things that were done in that time as well. Люди, люди сильные были. Вот. Ну, наверное, и сейчас, но другая степень силы. friends this brings us to the end of our video the end of our today's adventures mom thank you so much today. for being our soviet tour guide <laughs> greatly appreciated and yeah let me know in the comments guys uh have you ever been to ukraine or were you alive in the time of the soviet union and what do you kind of know about it while there is still communism still happening obviously in different countries and parts of the world i think the soviet union was probably one of the biggest <laughs> examples or experiments you could say um, of that kind of ideology and of course everybody will have their opinion on what kind of government system is best but I am excited to see where Ukraine is going to go next and I really do hope you know that it is for the best. Please welcome to our city. Yes, come to Kiev. Приезжайте в Киев. Добро пожаловать. Да. И всем добра и мира. Да. Желаем. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you're having a fantastic day and keep being your own kind of beautiful. Bye guys. Bye.